I'm Jack Sullivan. My class at FDIC 2015 is One Strike and You're Out, Roadway Incident Safety. It's the same class I've been teaching since 2000 at FDIC, and unfortunately we still have emergency responders that are being struck by vehicles on a regular basis. In our class, we're going to touch on a number of different subjects. One of the things that we're working on tonight is emergency lighting packages and the best way to set up an emergency lighting at an incident scene. We talked a lot about personal protective equipment and high visibility vests in the last few years, and a lot of people think when they talk about highway incident safety or roadway incident safety that the high visibility vest is all they really have to be wearing. There's a lot more to it, and in our class we'll make sure that we cover all of the things that you need to know in your department to protect your personnel. It starts out with training and the development of standard operating procedures and standard operating guidelines. We'll give you some oversight on what you need to do and what you should be thinking about, and for those of you that already have standard operating procedures, we'll give you a checklist to make sure that you've covered everything that needs to be covered in your SOP. Then we'll talk about training. What do you need to do to train your personnel so that they operate safely at an incident scene and do the best job they can so that they won't get struck by a vehicle, the victims that you're responding to assist won't be struck, and nobody will get hurt. But we're going to go one step further. We're going to give you some hints and advice and guidance on how to set up the incident scene so that your vehicles don't get struck at the incident scene. I know we've talked about blocking and using fire trucks for a block for a while now, and a lot of departments are doing that on a regular basis. One of the things that we're seeing that's developed over the last few years, more fire trucks are being struck at incident scenes because they are being used for a block. That's okay, we're protecting our personnel, but we've also learned there's ways that we can protect our apparatus too. And in this class, we'll give you some ideas of how to protect your apparatus and your personnel at an incident scene. After we get the SOPs and training covered, we'll make sure you're up to date on the most current laws, standards, and guidelines that are out there related to roadway incident safety. And we're gonna talk a lot about the interaction between fire service personnel, EMS personnel, law enforcement personnel, and Department of Transportation personnel at incident scenes. We saw a number of incidents in 2014 where law enforcement and fire didn't necessarily agree how the incident scene should be set up and how traffic should be managed around the incident. That's one of the areas we need to work on in the coming years. And we're gonna talk a lot about traffic incident management committees and how to work with those other agencies when you develop your SOPs and training to make sure that everybody's on the same page. I hope you'll join me at FDIC in Indianapolis in April of 2015 to learn the most current information about highway and roadway incident safety how to protect your personnel and make sure your people go home safe at the end of the night. Thanks.